Hello and welcome to ASG. Today we're going to walk through how to use Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, it's a free tool available online that you can use to stack your astro images. And uh, we're going to do a quick comparison on Deep Sky Stacker versus Astro Pixel Processor, which is a, uh, a paid version of a stacking program. Uh, the two are very similar uh, in that you can take your images, obviously, and stack them. Uh, to create your uh, your final uh, images, but uh, Deep Sky Stacker, of course, has the benefit of being free, while uh, Astro Pixel Processor does cost a couple hundred dollars USD, um, and it does have some nicer features in it too, as well. So whether or not those are uh, a solution uh, that some people would like to use is entirely up to them but we're just going to do a quick comparison on how to use these uh, tools and this video is just on Deep Sky Stacker so if you want to look at the comparison with Astro Pixel Processor I'll have that video up as well so let's take a look real quick at how to use Deep Sky Stacker um, here you can see I have taken some narrowband images and I just have this is the uh, North American Nebula. I've got some hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur images. And so what you'll do, uh, it's actually a really simple program and it's, it's actually a very fast program. Uh, but I just grab my images and let's just dump all of these lights in here and I just drag them in and it's going to say, hey, what are these? Are these lights or darks? And so I'm just going to add them as lights and you can see it adds all of them in here and you can see immediately some really good data uh, you can see what uh, you took them at gain wise you can see um, you know the, the filter being used all the metadata that comes with your images so there's some pretty good information there and you can click on these and you'll notice you'll be able to see them up above of course they're gonna look black like this um, and so what I like to do is come up to the sliders and move the sliders around so that I can start to at least see uh, part of the image. Uh, you'll be able to see things like plane trails and satellites and and so I kind of manipulate these just a little bit to get a little bit better visual. Um, it, it's not really stretching the image out or anything so you're not ruining them, it's just a preview. And that's probably good. I can see a little bit in there. Um, so what we want to do, and, and again you can flip through all your images this way really quick. Um, we want to register them and, and that's going to determine the quality and also the size of the stars and so, so forth. And then what we'll do is we'll stack them. And there's a nice little feature right here that shows you what's loaded. And I think a lot of people might miss this, but it shows you how many light frames, how many dark frames, how many flats, how many bias. And you can see right now I just have my 30 lights because sometimes you forget what you've loaded into this panel. So let's go ahead and go through the registration process. Uh, all you do is come over here to register check pictures and it's going to show this uh, little screen here. and you can do this all in one process which is pretty cool um, with Deep Sky Stacker uh, it's one of the differences and one of the reasons I like Deep Sky Stacker is you can just kinda one click do it all uh, where Astro Pixel Processor takes a lot longer but it says do you want to register already registered pictures that that's fine I don't have any of these registered yet um, automatic detection of hot pixels sure and then it says do you want to stack the pictures and I don't want to stack them right away you could do that and it would just do the whole entire process for you uh, but I'd like to take a look at the sc scores uh, when I get done stacking so I'm just gonna have these first two checked uh, all the other recommended settings I wouldn't worry about right now um, they're usually pretty good the way they are uh, but we'll go ahead and hit OK here and Astro or I mean Deep Sky Stacker is actually very quick uh, you might look at this and say well this is you know a minute 60 seconds out for, to do 30 um, if you're looking at Astro Pixel Processor this process can take a lot longer um, sometimes three or four minutes so there is definitely um, a quicker tool is using Deep Sky Stacker so I'm gonna let this uh, process here and I'll come back in a sec okay so we're finished uh, registering these and when you're done registering you'll notice that you actually get a score column here 
and you also have uh, over here on the far right you're gonna have the size of the stars and this is gonna give you a good indication as you flip through them if you want to keep them all or not keep them all um, you know some people absolutely keep all their data some people like to throw out a you know 20 percent of them and keep 80 um, just keep the high quality ones it's, it's entirely up to what you want to do especially if you're across multiple sessions um, the scores are arbitrary they don't really mean anything um, but they're just going to be used kind of as a reference the higher the score the, the little bit better it's it thinks it's considering based on smaller stars and you know that 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 data so let's take a look if you click on one you can start scrolling through them you can see all of these are very similar in scores and these are all my sulfur images and there's one with the you can see a satellite came shooting across there so that might be a situation where you want to go ahead and just unclick that one and if you like to and so you're not dealing with it here you can actually just remove it from the list altogether okay and then if we come down here we can see we're in our last sulfur image and we go to our oxygen and this is a common thing you'll see is oxygen if you take a look at some of your stars they're going to be very big um, oxygen always does that to it um, a lot of people have started using a little bit less gain and, or uh, turning down their their uh, exposure to something a little bit smaller trying to minimize that oxygen layer um, you can see you just get a lot more light pollution with it um, as well moonlight you name it and you can see that in your star size over here you'll notice most of these are in the threes all of a sudden I jump up into the fours just a little bit bigger stars and that can be kind of annoying in processing and then if we go down here into hydrogen okay, you can see hydrogen typically is going to have all your nebula in it and you can see the difference in the stars just by flipping back and forth between those two oxygen and hydrogen so it would be nice to have the star size of your hydrogen um, it'd be nice to have just a little bit of the stars to make your RGB colors uh, with oxygen uh, but you can see there is some nebula in there that's important and so we're going to use those and so this is all our registration process does it gives us some scores kind of gives us what to throw out if you see one that's all of a sudden you know half the score of the others you might want to click on it and check it out it's probably you know blurry or their mount got moved or uh, something happened uh, maybe a wind gust came up and you'll see things all blurry in that case ditch it um, a lot of these star trails um, like this one where you see satellite trails uh, planes you know it's worth even using the data sometimes that stacking process especially if you're dithering your images it'll get rid of that um, if you're using the right settings and I, I believe deep sky stacker does by default so I'm just gonna go ahead and stack all these for this purpose um, now the other thing we want to add here is our dark frames flat frames and offsets so before we actually start the stacking process now that we're done registering and kinda of checking out all the images um, is to add those into our system so I'm gonna come back you should probably have a good set of flats and darks and in biases so uh, I'm gonna grab my uh, bias and you can see these are all done in uh, 139 gain so I'm gonna go ahead and throw those in there and this is my bias and then I'll come back and grab my dark and these were all taken at 420 so this is my dark frame and I will go ahead and throw oops I don't want to start stacking yet I want to throw in my flat and that's my flat frame and when you add these you'll notice you'll see them in your list and they have a little bit different icon here and they will show up as what they are uh, flat bias and dark and you can see them right here on this little bar this is always kinda handy just to make sure you've got you know not only your light frames but also your calibrations and of course if you want to do your dark flat frames you can so this is important to do before you start stacking so that it'll actually use some of that data to start the, the calibration process now with Deep Sky Stacker uh, this is one thing that's a little bit more monotonous is you need to stack these individually 
So you've got sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen. Um, this is where you're going to have to go ahead, and I just click on the first one here and go down here, hold down the shift key, and I'll click my oxygen. And I'm just going to uncheck these because I'm just going to stack my hydrogen layer here. So I've got my dark flat, uh, my bias, and I've got my hydrogen. And so you have to do them individually. It won't go through and do them as a group. So I'm going to go ahead and stack pictures. And it's going to come up and say, you know, hey, is this information correct? It sees my offsets. It sees my darks. It sees my flats. Yes, that's fine. I'm going to use all the standard modes. Hit OK. And I'll let it stack that, and it'll kick out my hydrogen one. And I'll go ahead and pause it here. Oh, it's almost done. And you can go into your settings in Deep Sky Stacker and specify where you want it to kick out the actual picture, um, and you can give it a you know a name and so forth. I kick them out as TIFF images, um, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that over here so you can see it. Let me go back to my folder, and I will just call this stacked, and I will just give this a new session. I'm going to say this is session two and so when I pull it in here here's my TIFF this is just hydrogen so I'll call this NGC 7000 HA okay and then what I do is I come back in here and I usually just have to click up here on the side and that takes me right back to my list and at this point I'm gonna go ahead and you gotta do that for all three of them so I'm just going to highlight my hydrogen. I'm not going to uncheck those, and I'm just going to do my oxygen. And I'll check those, and I'm going to go ahead and stack those. And I'm only doing a few here. This is really a good benefit, though. This is a key reason to use Deep Sky Stacker. One, it's free, and two, it's quick. Um, I wish there was a couple more automated steps like this that it would pick up hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen and just go ahead and kick them out as individual TIFFs. But um, you can't complain. For a free tool like this, it does a pretty good job. Okay. Now, this guy got kicked out and looks really bad. I'm going to see why. Well, we'll leave it for now. I'm going to go ahead and unselect these, and I'm going to go ahead and start stacking my sulfurs just so we can get all three of them in here. Go ahead and check those and stack them. And so now we're going to kick out the sulfur one. And while it's doing that, I'll go ahead and move this image. I've got this is NGC 7000 oxygen and then it kicked out my sulfur so I'll drag my sulfur one in here NGC 7000 so now I've got my three images this will be used in Photoshop to go ahead and create my um, stacked RGB image as well and then I'll just go ahead and manually stack them at that point. So uh, that's how you can use Deep Sky Stacker to kick out um, your uh, copies. It does have some extra settings in here. Um, it, it's a way that you can actually adjust some of these and apply different stretches. I think most people are going to use PixInsight or Photoshop to do most of the stretching, so I never stretch inside of uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Um, it does have some other features I've used in the past. One of them is create the star mask. That's a great feature if you want to use that in Photoshop or PixInsight and use it to cover your stars um, and, and kick it out from one of your lights here. The other thing you might want to do is come in here and you can mess with your register settings and your stack settings. Now just make sure that when you do come in here, if you're going to, for example, mess with the stacking parameters, you might be moving into mosaic mode. And that's pretty handy if you're going to start creating a bigger um, image uh, in a mosaic. 
you can drizzle this and that'll just basically you know make everything huge and stretch your image out and that way when you compress it it actually looks pretty good um, that's a good way to work with understampled um, images um, you can flip through some of these as well again if you're not sure what they are you can mess them up and I prefer just to leave them the way they were um, and you know you know what they're doing you can go to output I do come here a lot of times and I'll mess with where it puts them out I like to put them out to my desktop um, the the actual stacked images um, otherwise they can get buried in some folders but you can obviously adjust that where uh, where you want to have it go. You can also do intermediate files which will kick out you know individual uh, calibrated frames. Um, to me that's just going to add a lot of disk space so I never do that. Um, I do wish it would you know allow you to just check all of them and kick out you know based on the filter um, your light frames uh, but I haven't found out a way to do that yet in DSS. So those settings I typically will leave um, we also have you know your register settings and you can set up thresholds in here you know pick up just 10 percent of the stars if you have a really uh, deep space image and maybe you don't have that many stars you may want to bump that down a little bit um, you can um, but typically 10 will work for most of us uh, unless you've got some you know really starless images so that's Deep Sky Stacker in the most part. Uh, load your images, register them, check them out in this list, um, and then go ahead and throw your calibration frames in and run the stack process. So it's free, it's quick, um, and uh, it's not a bad tool for what it does. The only thing in my recommendation is, is you got to sit there and do them manually per channel if you're doing narrowband. If you're not, then that's not an issue. But um, you know that can kind of be monotonous if you're doing it so we'll compare that to Astro Pixel Processor and what we do there and some of the tools that it offers at a cost so thanks for watching we'll see you on the other videos